the live-action Mulan movie is causing a lot of controversy for more reasons than you might think. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Let's get down to business. To discuss Mulan, no, not the good one, the live-action one. Yeah. There's been a lot of controversy about it. And I'm not talking about the 30 bucks you have to fork out to watch it on Disney+, Plus, where it has no Chinese subtitles. I'm not even talking about the fact that because we see Mulan leaning so strongly towards presenting as trans-masculine, and Mulan's ultimately abrupt embrace of her womanhood, it feels a little like trans-baiting. Or how they got rid of bisexual icon Li Shang from the movie. The worst part about getting rid of Li Shang is that they also got rid of the I'll Make a Man Out of You song. Definitely one of the best in the movie. It was indeed always a bop. In fact, there's no songs at all in the new Mulan. And no Mushu. Oh, Disney. Dishonor on you. Dishonor on your cow. But there are even bigger reasons why the live-action Mulan is uh, problematic. First of all, the lead actress, Liu Yifei. You remember the massive protests in Hong Kong, right? Hong Kongers were fighting to keep their freedoms, which have now been totally annihilated by the insane national security law. Well, last year, Liu Yifei said on her Weibo account, which is basically China's censored version of Twitter, I also support Hong Kong police. You can beat me up now. That was in reference to the idea being pushed by Chinese state-run media that it was the protesters who were really the violent ones, not the Hong Kong police. By the way, last week, Hong Kong police tackled a 12-year-old girl who was buying art supplies. So that's why Boycott Mulan became a thing starting last summer. Meanwhile, there's Agnes Chow, a prominent Hong Kong activist and clearly a danger to society. She was arrested last month under the national security law. Well, social media users described her as the real Mulan and our Mulan. Unless she's dressed like a man and singing songs, she's not my Mulan. But that was only the beginning of the controversy. Actor Donnie Yen, famous for his role in the Ip Man movies, is also in Mulan. On July 1st, the anniversary of when Hong Kong was taken over by communist China, Donnie Yen said on his Facebook account he was celebrating it. He even posted a video of him playing piano for Chinese leader Xi Jinping. And when some people commented how sad it was that he was standing up for an authoritarian regime, Yen wrote, I am fighting for the Chinese people, which indeed, for the longest time, been undermined and disrespected, but worst, abused. On Twitter, Donnie Yen also retweets and likes Chinese state-run media posts condemning Hong Kong protesters and cheering on Hong Kong's national security law. No, Donnie, you pulled a Jackie Chan. How could you do this to us? But the problems with the live-action Mulan go way beyond even the disgusting and craven way its stars cozy up to the Chinese communist regime. Because Disney filmed parts of the movie in Xinjiang. Yes, Xinjiang, where more than a million ethnic Uyghurs are in concentration camps. Not only did they film it in Xinjiang, but in the credits of Mulan, Disney offers a special thanks to more than a dozen Chinese institutions that helped with the film. These include four Chinese Communist Party propaganda departments in the region of Xinjiang, as well as the Public Security Bureau of the city of Turpin in the same region. The Turpin Public Security Bureau has been sanctioned by the U.S. government for persecuting Uyghurs. So these are organizations directly involved in putting Uyghurs in concentration camps. And Disney thanked them. Why? Because Mickey Mouse worships the almighty UN. Back in 1997, Disney released a movie called Kundun. It was about the Dalai Lama. 
the Chinese Communist Party freaked out. And even back then, Hollywood was aware that someday China would become a huge movie market. So what did then CEO of Disney, Michael Eisner, do? In 1998, he went to the premier of China, Zhu Rongji, and told him, we made a stupid mistake in releasing Kundun. Here, I want to apologize. And in the future, we should prevent this sort of thing, which insults our friends from happening. And now, there's a Disneyland in Shanghai. And as Chinese state-run media have said, China has become an important market for Disney. Here's current Disney CEO Bob Iger talking about all the success they've had in China since they stopped making movies about sensitive topics like Tibet. I actually look at China, though, as more of a glass half full, at least for our company. It was a market that was, was relatively inaccessible to us for a long time. It's now the second largest movie market in the world for us. And we built a huge theme park in Shanghai with significant government support, including infrastructure, roads, uh, mass transportation, trains, waste removal, power station, all basically at their expense. They welcomed us there and let us build Shanghai Disneyland. So we have a good relationship with the government of China and local governments in China, and our access has actually increased over time. Should there be a level playing field in certain circumstances? Absolutely. Are there other issues that have to get dealt with, intellectual property protection being one, cybersecurity another? Of course. But I generally, as a, at least as the CEO of the Walt Disney Company, look at China quite favorably. And China looked at the Walt Disney Company quite favorably, too, at least based on Chinese state-run media happily using the Disney CEO for propaganda. See, American companies? Just be patient. Your market access to China will increase over time. Disney said so. But one month later, Iger went from publicly praising China to being a little more cagey about it. China is very important, Disney. You're, the first sentence of your book is at Shanghai, Disney, the opening, and you talk about having been there many times over the years. Um, it's a difficult situation, admittedly, on China, but you, you haven't really spoken up uh, about China much, a little bit today, but what, you know, what's the line on China? When you, do you know, I don't think there not? isn't a line. And, be, and I look, I realize there's a damned if you do, damned if you don't here. If you say you're not going to comment on it, there are people who will be offended because you haven't taken a position in favor of them. Um, I think what we learned in the last week is not only how, um, well, how, we've learned how complicated this is, the situation is. And I think the biggest learning from that is that caution is, is imperative, meaning to take a position that could harm our company in some form uh, would be a big mistake for me to make and for us to make. I mean, so I'm, I'm not going to be baited into mm -hmm. a position at all which shouldn't be interpreted to be a for or against anything. I just don't believe it's something we should engage in in, 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 a, in a public manner. Hmm. What happened in one month to turn Iger from looking at China favorably into not wanting to comment on it publicly? Well. Daryl Morey tweeted his support for the Hong Kong protest, causing a huge amount of trouble for the NBA. And now, one year later, Mulan is pretty much Disney's NBA moment. Well, except for the fact that instead of silencing someone speaking out for human rights, they're filming in a place that's committing human rights atrocities. It's worse. What's that, Shelley? Oh. Based on satellite imagery, Mulan's Xinjiang scenes were filmed near 10 internment camps and 5 prisons. Yeah, it's definitely worse. Even the NBA realized that they had to cut ties with a basketball training camp they were running in Xinjiang. So Disney has admitted that the Mulan backlash has generated a lot of issues. But they would like to emphasize that almost all of the movie was shot in New Zealand, where there is no genocide. And the good news is, even though Mulan is generating controversy in Western countries, surely it will do well in China, where it is getting bad reviews. And where Chinese authorities have told major media outlets not to cover the release of Mulan because of the Xinjiang controversy. And that's Disney's China problem in a nutshell. 
Sure, they spent more than 20 years getting into the China market. And the Chinese Communist Party has encouraged them because it's great for them to have Disney CEOs going around and praising China and putting lots of money in the China market. But when it comes down to it, they'll gladly throw Disney under the bus. So there's only one thing Disney can do to solve their China problem. Build a Disneyland in Xinjiang and everyone will be happy. And now I want to answer a question from you, a fan who supports China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website Patreon. Michael asks, is this a new format? Do we get to look forward to more full half-hour programs in the future? Ah, Michael is referring to one of my Headlines episodes. Those usually come out on Friday and cover a bunch of stories about China that happened in the last week that maybe aren't enough to make a full episode about on their own. And this comment comes from a Headlines episode which was really long, almost 20 minutes. But this is an interesting question. For years we've had the same basic format for episodes, but we could try other things, like more Headlines episodes where there are a bunch of stories we go over quickly. We could do longer form episodes where it's just me and Shelley discussing major China topics. Those could even be filmed live so we could do live Q&A. I guess I'm asking you guys now, would you like us to experiment? Or are there other types of episodes you'd like to see us do? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for your question, Michael. You may be on to something. And if you want me to answer your question on the show and support us in our fight to deliver uncensored China news, sign up to support China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website Patreon. All it takes is as little as a dollar an episode. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.